So I'm Dave Crossland, and I'm a type designer. I studied for two years at the University of Reading in England. And the reason I became a type designer is because I wanted to contribute to the free software movement fonts. And I've been quite lucky with that. So I've been working for the last three years as a consultant to Google on the Google Fonts project. And I've also been recently running some uh, font workshops teaching graphic designers how to design type within a few days using only free software, mainly FontForge. And so I've been using FontForge exclusively the entire time I've been involved in font design. So I've uh, been demanding features for, uh, since 2006. And uh, last year I wanted to add some features to FontForge. So I was looking for some developers and I found Ben. Uh, yes, I'm Ben, uh, the Australian of the group. Um, did a uh, bachelor's, master's and PhD in computer science. Um, the PhD, I'm sort of happy to say, it was actually applied research. So there was mathematics, but there was also empirical testing with code to make sure that it performed as advertised. Um, the last sort of 10 years, I've been hacking on Loop Ferris, which lets you mount everything as a file system. So things like Flickr and Facebook and YouTube, you can just copy video files there or images there. So I don't think Flickr is going to go away or things like that, but being able to just sort of copy stuff there and drop it there rather than having that as the primary copy, I think is a good thing. Um, I was on the Oasis change tracking uh, subcommittee, um, which there basically were three proposals there for change tracking and collaboration. Um, and I've been implementing stuff in FontForge since, since last year. So, um, I would expect everyone is familiar with Doom, a game released 20 years ago, um, which was famous especially for its 3D graphics at the time. But when I was a kid, I loved Doom because it had some kind of neat features that I didn't see in many other games. So you could record demos so that when you were playing the game, you could record everything that happened in the game and then play that back so other people could see what you'd done. Also, you could customize the keys so that if you wanted you know, to have the keys set up in a slightly different way, it was easy to do that. And the most important thing was it had this network game mode, deathmatch, so you could play against your friends. And at the time, you know, it was difficult to set up networking between computers. And one of the reasons I became very fascinated with the computers was because I had to learn how to set up you know, a home network to be able to play against my buddies. So 20 years later, FontForge often you know, it doesn't have those kinds of features. And so I wanted to add those kinds of features. So I've been working with Ben as, over the last year or so to add uh, things like this. So we now have better preview mode. Um, we can save the undo stack into the file. So if you load up the file, you can undo what was recently done, see the changes recently made. And also every time that you save a file, then it keeps the previous revisions. So you get this log of the development of the font. We've also made it really easy to change the keys. So if you want to change the key bindings, it's really easy. And then we've also added a real-time collaboration mode. And so I'm going to do a demo. Famous last words. We discovered a little bug, actually, about two hours ago. And I managed about 15 minutes ago to fix it on my laptop, which um, it sort of shows you, you know, it all seems quite easy, but it goes sideways really quickly when it does go sideways. So, so we've got this collaboration menu here. So we have this collaboration. We have this collaboration menu here. We can start a session, and then we can start up a, another instance of FontForge. And then we can connect to that session. Okay. 
And so if we open up a, a glyph here, and place down some points. Like this. We can see it's appeared on this client. And so we can create points. We can move points. We can draw shapes with the rectangle tool and the ellipse tool. We can use the uh, Bezier pen tool to create shapes. And we can open up the metrics window in both sessions. And we can see that if we adjust the metrics, then that's updated. Um, for, that, for that counter shape to work, we're going to need to change the direction. There we go. Um, however, uh, it can crash. Um, That's a feature, really. <laughs> so it's, it's uh, yeah, let's see if we can make it crash. Um, oh, yeah, here we go. I think we changed the width here. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, what else can we show you? So in the preferences, you can now see that there's a revisions to retain uh, feature and an undo read limit to save. And so this revisions is set to 32. And so we can see if we save this file and then we change something. Each time we save it, then revisions are being retained so we can go back in time. Um, and we have a key binding for instant preview so you can quickly see the shapes that you're designing. And if you open up the FontForge Mac bundle, And you can see you have this very simple text file with all the key bindings. So it's very easy to change them. So uh, Ben, how do you do it? <laughs> um, a lot of the network IO, um, if people are looking to do a similar thing, I'd highly recommend the zero MQ. Um, it, for when you're sending messages, basically when you get the binary information you want to send, uh, when you hand that to zero MQ, it places that into another thread to send it, so UI doesn't actually block based on network traffic. And likewise, when you're getting the stuff back again, you don't have to worry about um, out of order or partial delivery. You either get a message or you don't. And zero MQ would sort of sit behind and try to make sure that the message actually comes through if it keeps getting dropped. So a lot of the painful sort of stuff in networking programming, it doesn't. Everything doesn't go away, but a lot of the low-level painful stuff is a lot less painful. Yeah, so, so zero MQ builds itself as a socket library that acts as a concurrency framework. So for doing this kind of concurrency, um, you don't have to deal with the, you know, a lot of the typical hard problems. Um, you just treat it as passing messages over the network, and this library takes care of the, the difficult stuff. And so um, Ben's going to give another presentation tomorrow. They're going to dive into the more technical details about this. And we're going to be working on this as part of the Interactivist workshop for the next two weeks. And so I invite you to come and help us make it better.